In this video, I want to talk about how to convert between real decimal values and their equivalent real binary values. And we'll look at converting back the other way as well. And to do this, we're going to quickly go through just one example. So let's say someone comes up to you uh, and says, Hey, buddy, what's 42 and 17 hundredths converted to binary? Right? So we want to convert it to binary. And you, being uh, keenly aware of how binary works and how computers work, you say, uh, well, how many bits of precision do you want? Because I can only store so much. And so they say they want five bits of precision. Now, what that really means is how many bits past the radix point. And of course, we would have to combine the total number of bits of our representation. Um, but we'll just be OK. Uh, with this one. So let's say five bits of precision. Um, one can take 42 and immediately go, well, 42 is, um, let's see here, 32, no 16, plus 8 is 40, no 4, and then there's a 2 and no 0. Hey, 42 is this in binary. And uh, let's see, so 42.17 must be 101010 point, and then five mystery bits down here. So how do we figure out what those five mystery bits are? Well, I have seen many students do this incorrectly, and what they would typically do first is, much like they say 42 is this bit pattern right here, we might write that 17 is this bit pattern right here. And lo and behold, it's one, two, three, four, five bits. So it seems like this works into our five bit uh, precision angle, right? So 42.17 must be 101010.10001 binary. But this is totally wrong. This is absolutely not how that works. If nothing else, when we look here past the radix point, this is the quantity 17. That is correct, but it is now in terms of the lowest digit position over here, which is bit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the negative direction, uh, and 2 to the negative fifth is 1 32nd. So this really is, from the fractional side, 17 32nds which is equal to 0 0.53125. So these are not the same. This is way off and is bad news. That is not what we want to do. Instead, what we do is reconsider the original value, 42.17. What we have here is equivalent to saying uh, 42 for this part, right? And then this part is clearly a 17, but it's in terms of the exponential representation of this lowest digit. So this is one, two bits over in base 10. So 10 to the negative two power is one over 100. And we know this somewhat intuitively as a uh, as people who use decimal regularly. So this is really 42 and 17 hundredths. Well, 42 is definitely going to be this bit pattern, and so we're okay there. But what we need to do is find out uh, what 17 divided by 100 is, uh, and do that with only five bits of precision. So let's do it. So 17 is 10001 zero, 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 one in binary, 16 plus 1. 100 decimal uh, is going to be 64 plus 32 is 96, so I need four more. Uh, so no 16s, no 8s, a 4, no 2s, and no 1s. So here's my binary for 17, and here's my binary for 100 decimal. So now I just take this bit pattern and divide it by that one. 
So let's do it. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Divide it into one, zero, 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 one. Now I want five bits of precision in my answer, so I'm just going to add arbitrary, uh, arbitrarily. I'm going to add five zeros here, which don't change the value, but give me the lineup for my uh, precision for this particular problem. Then we can just do the division. Now to do that, we better figure out what the negative version of this is going to be for our mechanical process. So let's flip all the bits. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Add 1 to that. Get a 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Nice palindrome. All right, uh, this is a 7-bit value, so we know we have to go out at least to 7 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So up to this 0. Now we compare. Bits the same. These two bits are different, and because the dividend, partial dividend here has a 0 in it, we're going to get a 0 here. Now that means this guy's going to bump up to being an 8-bit value divided by a 7-bit value. So we know it's going to be a 1. And then we'll add our fancy palindrome pattern down here. to get to the next partial dividend. 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 1, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 1, 0, and we're not going to worry about this one here because it's beyond the 7 bits that we need because our divisor is 7 bits. Bring down a 0 as part of the process. Now I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 bit number, so I got to check and see which is bigger. Bits the same. Bits are different because this has a zero. I'll put a zero here. Now I'll bring down one more bit. Now that's a zero, and that means this is an 8-bit number divided by a 7-bit number. So this must be a 1. Now I don't have to bother adding this because there's no reason to continue. We've already found our 5 bits of precision equivalent to the 17 divided by 100. So there is no reason to even do uh, the subtraction through addition thing here uh, because we're not going to gather any more bits. So from this we find our answer. It turns out that 42.17 when converted uh, to binary with 5 bits precision, notice that's not an equal sign, is uh, the bit pattern for 42, which is this, point this, zero, zero, one, zero, one, binary. But this is not an equal sign. This is just what you get when you convert it. So the next big question is, what is this, right? When we convert it back to decimal. So uh, we've got this binary value. What would it be reinterpreted as if we printed it out to the human world in decimal? Well, this is relatively easy to deal with because this is 42. This is a radix point. <laughs> so we would get the dot here and then we'd have whatever else this is. Now let's figure this out fractionally first. So this is a 5. 101 is 5. But this goes all the way out to 5 bits, so 2 to the negative fifth, well that's 1 32nd. So it turns out what we have here is 42 and 5 32nds, not 42 and 17 one hundredths. And let's be very clear here, 5 32nds does not equal 17 one hundredths. In fact, uh, 5 32nds, we'll finalize this answer, is actually equal to one or point one five six two five. So the conversion from a real decimal value to binary is not that complicated. It's just discovering that the fractional part of your real decimal value is something in terms of a power of ten. And so you just perform that division and capture the binary result to the precision you need. The conversion from a real binary to real decimal is also not that complicated at all. However, 
we must always remember that with these conversions, particularly when we give ourselves precision limits, there is the strong possibility of a loss of data. But otherwise, the conversion mechanisms are simple.